What's up, everybody? I guess this is a celebration of sorts. This is the official episode for our 10-year anniversary. My condolence to those of you who've stuck around this long, and uh, my appreciation for you new listeners that never went back and listened to the old shit. You guys are all right. (laughs) (laughs) We've wasted so much of your time. (laughs) Yeah, really. I was literally just talking to... uh, to my partner tonight about um we were watching some show where where the characters were starting a podcast and and their first episode had a hundred something views or listens or whatever and i was telling her i'm like when we put out our first episode there were 16 people that downloaded that episode (laughs) which means that there were 14 people that weren't mateo and i that downloaded that episode (laughs) and uh (laughs) You know, now we've almost doubled that number now, 10 years later. It's fucking amazing. That's how you grow a podcast, guys. Double your numbers every decade. (laughs) Almost, almost double. We're not quite there yet. But, but, uh, this, this, this is our 10 year anniversary show. And honestly, this episode is more a celebration of you guys than a celebration of us. Um, we had asked for listeners to send in questions or give us their scary stories or if anybody was willing to to come on and, and talk about it. So we've got a, a few people that actually decided to take some time and, and uh, talk to us about their experiences. And throughout the show, we'll be reading experiences from, from other listeners as well. So really... the. I know, I know that that I talk a lot of shit, but but for real, thank you guys all. With without you guys listening, there, there's no way that this show would have continued to exist. You know, it it was weird. The first like few weeks, every episode that came out, we saw increased numbers, and I mean, none of them were significant because you know nobody knew who the fuck we were. Um, but we did, you know, over the first year, like we saw a, a huge increase and then it's just continued to spread since then. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing probably not, not another 10 years, but 20 years from now, we will probably have figured this whole thing out and, uh, <laughs> uh we'll probably be controlling the world at that point. So thank you guys for getting our future selves in charge of the world. You guys are the best. We don't have any advertisements of our show anywhere, so those numbers growing, it only comes from you guys sharing the show with your friends and and family and stuff like that. It's amazing to see how many listeners are from all over the world. We, we got to talk to our buddy Matthias from Sweden. That, I mean, for me, maybe it's because we're old and the internet's not, not, we weren't born with it in our hand, but it, to me, that's still just, that's fucking cool. Right. Yeah. It's anytime we've had someone on from anywhere in Europe, it's, it's always wild to me because we're all existing at different points in time, you know, like, like whenever we've had Martin on in, in, uh, Scotland, he he usually comes on, it's like six in the morning, his time. And it's like fucking one in the morning, my time. And for Mateo, it's, it's like what, 10 or 11? Yeah. 10. Yeah. 10. So it's, it's weird because we all exist in these and you know, for, for him, it was literally the next day. And so it's, he's starting his day. We're finishing off. It's just, it's weird, man. And, and the fact that we get to do cool stuff like that, you know, and all the people we've talked to over the years, authors and and fucking paul hellier still still blows my mind first year paul hellier what the fuck yeah, rest in peace paul hellier it just shows how nice of a guy paul hellier is like he doesn't give a fuck he's like yeah i have no you guys i have have two and a half listeners i will come on and talk to your two and a half listeners you guys publish your podcast to tumblr and uh, <laughs> i'll come on <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm pretty sure we were still publishing to Tumblr at that. God damn, what a what a fucking journey! Yeah, no kidding. 
And here we are now making stupid fucking episodes every 100 episodes that half you people hate and the other enjoy it somewhat. And then there's like one person out there be like, yeah, the 100 episodes. I fucking love this shit. And for you, sir, you're my people. It's okay. It's okay if you don't like the the hundredth episodes with we do the goofy storylines. But somebody left a review on iTunes about how the Whatcast used to be good, but now it's turned into a radio drama. That that always stuck with me. The, yeah, but but like literally within like weeks of that, someone else posted for the, anyone who listens through, you're gonna get a fucking huge reward at I I don't remember if it was two hundred or three hundred whatever episode it was. But it was one of the 100 ones, and, he, and they were, like, so pumped about it. That's I fucking cool. loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we've, we've had, like, no drama or trolls like this in 10 years, really, you know? not Nothing nothing too troublesome or, I mean, no dick pics, nothing. Well, there there is allegedly uh, some, some videos of you skiing, Mateo, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh. Well... <laughs> While riding bareback on a shark, that's hilarious. We've seen it. The pa- the patrons have seen it. Well, at least the patrons that are that were around at that point in time. I've got it on my wall. It's posted <laughs> on my wall. I took that shit to Kinko's. <laughs> In hence. In hence. Can we make it a cutout? <laughs> I would like a life-size standee, please. And I'm just going to pin it over my bed. Yeah. We're going to put it right next to the other standout of The Undertaker you have. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be like Undertaker's about to choke slam you while you're uh, choking something else. (laughs) So, Mike, what's been one of the coolest things about doing the show for you for the past 10 years? You mean aside from Paul Hellier? Aside from, I, I really, it's 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 the people, man. Like the the people we've been able to talk to, and the and the connections we've made. Like, you know, like people like like from the the early days of the show, like Kev and Brett. Like those guys, I to this day, I I still fucking love those guys, and and I really I don't talk to them as much as I wish I did, but um, that's that's mainly my fault, um. But at, at least once a year, I'll reach out to Kevin. We'll we'll try to connect or something. But um, you know, I in the early days of the show, we had a lot of people that were really helpful, and you know, a lot of other podcasters would come on just so that we'd have a guest, even if they weren't, you know, necessarily like like Drew Sample, for instance. Like he came on the show, he didn't have weird shit to talk about, but he came on just to help us out. Yeah. Drew was, was awesome. a, a very instrumental in helping us in the early days. Yeah, yeah. And Derek, same with Derek. Yep, I just talked to him too. He's good. He's he's golden. Did you? Yeah, he doesn't podcast nice. anymore, but he he's still trucking. Yeah, the same thing for me. the The coolest thing is the people. It's it's so amazing to think about how many people who are listeners, and I don't know how you guys think we view you guys as listeners. I don't. I mean, to me. The term listeners is kind of weird. I don't like the term fans at all. Not even when I played music. I, didn't, yeah. I don't like that term. It's short for fanatic. I don't it, either. It's weird. And it, it makes it just makes me feel douchey. Like, yeah, we got we got some fans listening to us. Like, fuck off. Yeah. No. Like, if you guys want to be our fans, that's cool, but I will never, never refer to you as such. Right. It's amazing that these, these listeners, quote, listeners... How many of them have become actual friends of ours and how long we've known some of these people? It's amazing to think how long we've known Brett, you know, and 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 Brandy and and and, and Derek and shit like that. It's it's just amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. And especially considering I fucking hate people too. So <laughs> for for me to have made some uh some pretty awesome connections with people. Maybe maybe it's because I don't have to see them face to face. Maybe I don't. No. Know. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I honestly, I think the show acts as a filter. It's this the people who are reaching it probably, out. To you, you're probably right. Yeah, the people who are reaching out to you to to you know through the show are people who are like minded, interested in the same stuff. Right. Um, and them liking uh, listening to you talk about it is a bonus, of course, but. 
I think I think I think it just filters yeah, if out. If you can put up with my bullshit, chances are you're you're my you're 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 my friend. <laughs> you know, if you if you put in the time and and actually listen to me spew my brand of bullshit and you come back for more and uh you're you're definitely the type of people that I would associate with. You like my sense of humor, you like the weird shit we talk about. You're okay with with Mateo banging sharks. Like it's total. I'm I'm huge fan. Huge fan. <laughs> I'm I'm a fan of you guys. True. And I'm I'm willing to say, I'm willing to say that I'm willing to say that I am a fan of our listeners. Me too. Me too. We wanted. I wanted to say thank you to the people who wrote in and then spent time talking to us this time. The, uh, I, I think I yeah. mentioned in one of the calls to where. Um, they they said they had mentioned they appreciated us uh, letting them tell their story, and uh, we I had to say it's not the first time we've asked. We just really never gotten response from anybody, so it was something that we enjoyed doing. Mike and I have decided that we're going to spend our twilight years becoming two uh, old Art Bell like figures that will just do live call in shows if we ever work that out when we're old. <laughs> So there will be more episodes like this. So if, if you sent in a story or uh, or wanted to come on, it's, you haven't missed your chance. We're going to do more episodes like this. If you guys have stories, we'll, we'll do more episodes. Send them to us. Or if you want to come on, it's, yeah. it's no problem. Yeah. And for anybody who sent something in that we missed or wanted to come on and we weren't able to connect, um, you know, send us a reminder so we can we can get that squared away next time we did we we actually got quite a few uh quite a few responses which was unexpected so uh you know it is a possibility that we could have missed one or two so if we did i apologize i'm also going to apologize in advance for a later recording in this episode um i was it was requested of me to do a Horrible, horrible German accent. Because um, I don't know how to do a good German accent. And I, I <laughs> let him know. But uh, our our buddy, Warsmith Chris, um, sent a story in. So when we get to his story, please understand it's not me making a uh, serious attempt at a German accent. Because, as I mentioned, I cannot do one, believably. And it's going to sound terrible. And it'll probably be offensive to the ears of German-speaking people everywhere. So, um, don't blame me. You can burn down Chris's village and uh, mail him your your stinky sweat socks. <laughs> he remembered that we offered the uh, the ability re- to request any type of music uh, <laughs> that I can put behind yeah, it. He's the only one that remembered that. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, yeah. But he did get because if uh, we had a bunch of different requests. Yeah, I I want you to do this in Klingon. I I I don't know Klingon, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, piecing this one together was a stark reminder of our time differences. So we 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 got in as many stories and and interviews with you guys as we could, but we will do it again. We liked doing it again. We want to end, yeah. end our well, careers yeah. doing uh some type of just call in type show to where you guys share stories with us. So if like you said, if if you want to send your uh your stuff and we'll we'll collect this we'll collect it and when we've got enough for an, another you know listener episode we will do another listener episode so um keep the shit even if you even if you sent us a story for this one but you've got another story that you want to send us send us that other story and be like hey i got another story and then we'll fucking read it again and if you don't want to be named just say keep me anonymous if you want to use a pseudonym you can use a pseudonym if you want to use your real name and provide your address, phone number, and social security number, I'm not going to stop you. You know, it's it's your life, man. Speaking of the stories that we got in, we got some good stuff, man. There's some really creepy yeah, yeah. stuff. There's some stuff in there that I never expected to get. Yeah, it was it was really cool going through that. Um, let's let's fucking dive in, man. Right. <laughs> Okay, this story is from the Mighty Delago that you might recognize from the birthday song or for those who are in the, the Patreon Discord. Um, 
he is the almighty moderator. Um, but he, he sent in a story through email that I will now relate to you. The events that follow took place last year at the school in which I worked as a health and safety supervisor. My small office was a back room at the center of the science lab, which was located on the fourth floor of the second building of the school. On this specific day, most of the kids at the school were out on a trip to the zoo, leaving only a small portion of the staff and kids at the school. I didn't have much to do, so out of boredom I walked out of my office and started exploring the lab and playing around with equipment, responsibly, of course. After a while, my attention went to the fire extinguisher, which was hanging right by the door of the lab. A door which I was always asked to keep closed to avoid kids from walking into the lab without me noticing. I walked up to it, held it, and checked the expiration date. I was taking my job seriously, as you can see, and everything looked good. The extinguisher still had over half a year of time before it went bad so I hung it back on its specific holder. I missed the first time, so I just did one of those looks from the side to make sure it aligned correctly, and that's when I noticed something weird along the wall. Behind the closet, on the right corner of the room, was something that was covered up. I thought maybe there was a door there, or a window, or even part of the lab that just looked bad or moldy that was covered up with the closet, and whoever put it there just knew it was too heavy and inconvenient for anyone to move said closet to check that area, so I did what anyone in their right mind would do. That's right. I just had to know what was behind. I looked outside through the glass pane in the middle of the door. No one was outside. I also looked up to the corner of the lobby, leading into the lab to check the surveillance camera. I wanted to make sure no one would ever know what I was about to do next. All looked clear and it was pointed away. I took an old sheet of thin craft plastic that I found at the lab and cut it to pieces, slid a piece under each of the four legs of the giant metal closet to allow for easier movement, and I started pulling it slowly away. Once I got it a couple inches away from the wall, I stuck my hand and switched to pushing it instead. It was clunky, but it got the job done and to my surprise, there it was. A large door with a gritty wooden texture that even had an eyelet, and at one point, I just had to take a look inside. There was not much to describe. It looked like a spiral staircase that was probably in the original plan of the building that ended up unused. There were piles of dust and webs everywhere you looked, and it all gave off a freaky vibe. It was not dark, but not lit either. The light filled it all somehow through reflections from the windows along the side of the building. I snuck outside to try to make sense of the structure. Right next to the school, there were private apartments of people living on all floor levels, but it seemed like even on their end, that part of the structure had been cut off. They could not connect to the school floors directly, and could only enter from a separate entrance located around the school where kids can't directly go. Obviously, that made sense considering it's a school and you don't want random people using it as an entrance, nor do you want kids disappearing out of nowhere. I got the info that I needed, yet something still felt off. The whole thing just gave off creepy vibes and I could not tell why. I took a picture through the eyelet and returned everything the way it was. Then I headed back into the office to grab some food for lunchtime. It wasn't even 15 minutes later before I heard violent knocking on the main door of the lab. At first, I thought I was hearing things, but then it happened a second time. I walked out of my office, into the lab, and looked at the door. Through the glass pane, I could clearly see that no one was there, and then it happened again for the third time. I was freaking out at this point. I slowly walked right up the door and looked in all directions through the glass, No one was behind the door, hiding below the frame or on either side, and no one with such inhuman speed could knock on the door then run away quickly enough before I could see them. 
I had a clear view of the entire length of the lobby from my position, and that's when the biggest jump scare hit me. The knocking happened once again much louder than the previous three times. I literally froze in place. Part of me wanted to snag the door handle and swing the door open and scream at whoever was pulling off a prank, but as I stood there I thought the situation through. No kids were present at my building on that specific day. The janitor lady was not doing any work there for that reason as well. Teachers never leave the class and randomly roam an empty building that had no active classes the entire day. The principal was such a lazy woman that she'd never come up to me for questions. She'd always ask the secretary to call me on my phone to go down myself. The weather was not windy. And even then, we've had crazy windy days before where none of this door knocking effect had happened before, so none of it lined up. And then I started thinking more paranormal. I had heard of and seen videos of people hearing violent knocks on their doors and then not seeing anyone when they answered. And people always said, do not open the door if this happens to you in the comments on these videos. So I listened to that advice. I kept that damn door closed and said out loud, you're not welcome here. Please go back to wherever you came from. Admittedly, it felt silly, but to my surprise, that did the trick. After several minutes of standing there, no further knocks were heard. I went back to my office and cursed myself for not having taken my phone with me to record it all as it happened. That was my biggest regret. Could I have released or invited some spirit over by uncovering that hidden door? What kind of history does that spooky staircase hold? Was someone hurt or forgotten or killed there? Was that the reason it was closed off to begin with? Or was the hidden door a completely unrelated event that just sort of happened on the same day along with yet another more bizarre encounter? I'll leave all that for you to decide because I've thought about it for a long time and I just cannot make sense of it. I remember when uh, that happened. He was talking about that in the Discord. It's weird to hear it as one collective story instead of like r missing some posts about what happened. Right. Yeah, and and I I've, I've mentioned before that I'm not super active in the Discord. I'm trying to get better, but um I missed that whole thing. And I only heard about it afterwards and, you know, trying to go and scroll through and trying to find a specific thing on Discord isn't exactly the easiest. But, um, yeah, so when I got to actually see it, it was my first time actually hearing, the, or, well, I guess in this case, reading the story. But uh, it was my first time getting the story, so it was, it was kind of cool. Very creepy stuff. I'd be, I'd be nervous to work there forever. <laughs> um. I mean, I would be more curious at this point. Yeah, that's than, true. I'd than be scared. I'd want to get to the bottom of what that, what's behind yeah. there, why it's there. Right, right. Well, the next story that we're going to have is a, a an interview, a call that we actually got to have with our buddy Matthias from Sweden, and this ended up being a very shocking story, and you'll hear why. And and this story, there's some pictures that accompany it, and we'll post those in the show notes. Uh, you guys have to check the pictures out after hearing this story, and we'll start that now. Yeah, so me and a couple of friends had an um, uh, event happen to us in the late 1990s, maybe early 91. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was really early 1991. And uh, I live in Sweden, south of Sweden. So uh, a few days before this event happened, I will come to what the event is. But uh, my big sisters, two big sisters and a friend of theirs saw some strange light in the sky in a little village that we live in. Uh, and uh, me and two friends who were about the same age as me. One guy was a few years older, but we were around seven or eight year old, years old back then. We were out playing, you know how it was back in the days, we didn't have internet or yeah, much to do. So we were just out playing all day long from early morning to late night uh, in the weekends. Yep. So me and two friends around the same age, 
you said, we were out playing uh, at a playground, like 200 meters from my house. One meter is like one yard, so 200 meters, 220 yards, something like that. From our house was a playground, and uh, we were there very often, so nothing special. We were, And uh, we met two or three other kids there, uh, so we were like five guys, seven or eight years old, just playing around. Then two of the other kids left, so there were three of us, and just all of a sudden, from absolutely nowhere, no lights in the sky, nothing, we ended up seeing three beings in the woods by the playground, and two of these looked exactly like the, those Hopkinsville goblins, you know? Ooh, were they the same size? Were they really small? Uh, they were around four foot. So I don't remember how small those guys were, but... I think they were between three and four feet. Yeah. Was, was what was described, yeah. Uh, were they were they floating like the Hopkinsville goblins, or did they have, like, the long arms and, and atrophied legs? Uh, yes, actually. They, they were... I don't remember exactly, but it was like two of them were four feet, and one of them was behind a tree and was a lot longer, maybe six or seven fur or something oh. but i don't remember exactly how that one looked because it was perched like behind a tree so we didn't really see that one but the two small ones they were like floating around and at the same time it looked like they were walking it's very hard to describe and it was so long ago but yeah pretty much uh, you could say they were floating you, you can you couldn't see like the muscles or something uh, moving when when they uh, walked around, so it was like just effortless through the woods, you know. Wow. Wow. Were was it? Were they themselves giving off any lights, like glowing at all, or did they did they seem to notice or try to interact or anything? I don't think they were like any lights or something. I I don't remember any lights or anything spectacular like ufo or something it just like from nowhere they were just there you know it's like they were teleported there or something i don't know but yeah you know, just all of a sudden they were there yeah. so no craft it was just the lights that were seen earlier yeah the, my sister saw i never saw the lights but they saw lights a few days before this event so days oh wow okay and um, from the house we lived in and the playground, there was like uh, 200 meters of uh, uh, yeah, uh, like, like a forest or something uh, w with a little path you can go to, uh, to the playground. And uh, when we are, were at the playground and saw these things, obviously we freaked the hell out, you know. Uh, but they stood near the path to back to my house so <laughs> we did not want to run past them through the woods mm -hmm. so we had to run like four blocks four or five blocks uh, around to get to the streets where me and one other kid lived so uh, i don't re really remember how long it was that we stood there was them but i don't think it was more than maybe one or two minutes and one of the kids the the older kid he he was just frozen so we had to scream at him t to get him to come with us you know because he was just he it was like he uh, like a stone statue you know uh, petrified right yeah completely petrified yeah uh, absolutely yeah. completely t petrified he just stood there and uh, stared at him and uh, yeah we had to scream at him <laughs> like walk uh, just look him straight in the eye and scream at him to get him to come with us, you know, so he was completely out of it. That's frightening. Yeah, it was, it was, I don't remember actually being frightening for me, just weird, it was a shock, you know, because we were just playing, having fun, and then all of a sudden these three beings just standing there was just a bizarre moment, you know. Uh, but w w when we <laughs> came back home uh, my mom actually made sure that I uh, drew uh, the beings on paper and she uh, called the parents of the two other guys and 
made them do the same. So all three of us drew these uh, beings and it was basically the exact same drawing we made. And uh, the one guy uh, who just was petrified, he actually was so scared when he got home. So he pissed himself, you know, he, he wasn't himself for like a couple of days after. Wow. So he took it hard actually. So. Wow, it's it's weird. Did did he uh, like in looking back? Did he have a, a different recollection of the events than than you guys did, or or was it just he reacted different? Yeah, I, I don't think he remembered much from it, to be honest with you. Right, uh, and that could be like some survival wild. instinct, you know, just forget yeah. that traumatic ex- experience. Because we practically had to like drag him away from there and scream at him for. I really don't know what would happen if, you know, if we, the, the two other guys just ran from there and left him there. God only the knows what would have happened then, you know. Right. And, now, uh, you guys watched it for a minute or so. What prompted you guys to get the heck out of there? Did they notice you or something or was did you guys just... Yeah, they, they, was, they were staring at us. Oh. And it was not far away, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe, like, they stood two or three meters away from us. Wow. Like, I know you guys don't use meters, but, you know, uh, like two or three meters, how how long that is. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably between nine and ten feet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably even less than that, but around that, yeah, eight feet. I'm sure you hadn't heard of the Hopkinsville Goblins when you were eight years old. Oh, no, 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 no. I was going to come to that. This was, in, like I said, in the early 90s, and there was no internet or, you know. I don't remember any of us being interested in that kind of stuff, really, you know. When you're seven, eight-year-old in 1990, all you do is like play Nintendo and uh, watch shitty movies. Yeah. So, of course, we, we, we have... The, had the scene E.T. and stuff like that, probably, but nothing like this. And a couple of years later, a couple of years, probably like 10 years later, 15 years later, when I first saw um, drawings and heard of the Hopkins of the case, you know, my jaw just fucking dropped, you know. There they are, exactly the same thing that we saw, you know. It's bizarre. And I even have those... Um, drawings that I made uh, back in the day. Really? Absolutely. And my mom, uh, you know, she believed in me 100% on this, so she uh, contacted a UFO investigator and uh, we met a few few months later or weeks or something, I don't remember, but he had me uh, draw, draw draw, uh, draw the beings again. And it's basically the same, but uh, I can send you the pictures of that, you know, if you like. Yeah, that would be great. I would love that. And there's just, you know, spitting image of the Hopkinsville. Uh, and like I said, uh, never heard of those uh, for until like 10, 15 years after this event. So. Were you familiar with the movie uh, Gremlins at that point? Um. I don't really remember. Maybe, maybe, but I can't say yes and I can't say no. I was just curious if that was like a connection you had made when you saw them. Yeah, absolutely. I d- I didn't find Gremlins to be scary enough to like. Uh, I don't know. Maybe your maybe a mind would just bring up that movie to make sense of what's happening. But well, I mean, based on appearance, they you know they're they're short things with big ears, long arms, little legs. Like that's that's what uh, the the design was originally based off the Hopkinsville Goblins. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Like I guess E. T. the movie E. T. was originally supposed to be like a uh, uh, E. T. was the last one of the Hopkinsville Goblins that was left behind, and it was supposed to be more of like a horror movie type thing rather than like a sci fi adventure. Hmm. But uh, then they went to sci-fi adventure instead, and then the the, the horror aspects kind of got moved over to Gremlins, and rather than being aliens, they were magical beings. But yeah, yeah, kind of neat. Huh. 
Yeah, how strange to hear another account that matches the Hopkinsville Goblins creatures. There have always been one of those one-offs that we love so much. And I've never heard anything even remotely close to the Hopkinsville Goblins. I mean, there's tons of cases of, of other goblins, but the Hopkinsville Goblins stand out on their own. I mean, that I, that had to be mind-blowing when you saw <laughs> the drawing of the Hopkinsville Goblins. Yeah, it was bizarre. I even remember where I was when I saw uh, those pictures, uh, the drawings of the Hopkins Hill goblins, uh, because it was almost <laughs> as shocking as the original event that when I saw these creatures, when I saw the drawings of them from the Hopkins Hill case, because it, it unlocked uh, the memory in my mind. Because you know how it is when you're like seven, eight. The days pass, you know, I didn't really think about the event as crazy as my sound, but... That, that was my next question, is when we're young, I, I experienced a lot of paranormal stuff when I was younger, and it's, it's funny to think back at how you just move on with your life after <laughs> experiencing something like that, yeah, and yeah. You, you just eventually forget, and that's how it was for you with this? Yeah, and actually, uh, we moved away, uh, moved away, away from the house shortly after this event, uh, un completely unrelated to the event. Uh, it wasn't because of the event, but so I changed school, you know, and made new friends and uh, stuff like that. So that pro probably took uh, away from it as well. That I, I didn't really, you know, uh, thought about it as, as much as you might think. Right, right. That would definitely. Uh... It changed things for me. I wouldn't want to tell brand new friends that I saw this weird goblin in the woods. <laughs> no, and you guys are actually one of the few persons I talked to this about. So, oh man, well, thank you for sharing it. A whole 19 people are going to hear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would have been 20, but you're here. So, yeah, oh, you know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, uh, the thing that I thought about most is, you know, what the hell was it, you know? Because, sure, my sister saw strange lights and all that, but these beings just, uh, they just appeared. They didn't come running or just one second there, not there, and just like that, they're, they're there, you know? That's one of the weirdest things that, it's almost like they just appeared, teleported or whatever you want to say. I mean, that was really, really weird. That'd be weird. I bet, having been there for a little bit and been playing and knowing your surroundings and all of a sudden, these things that are not yeah. supposed to be there are there. Yeah, it was really weird. And, like, that friend that got really upset, you know, and couldn't really sleep for a week, you know, uh, so he he was completely out of it. So, But I don't really know, don't know his experience, you know, uh, since he got so upset and they just stood there petrified if maybe they communicated with them or something. I can only speculate, but... Yeah, right. They can, We don't know how the experience was for him. They could have said mental images of, like, world exploding or <laughs> warfare. Yeah, exactly. Yikes. And of course, we we we, uh, we spoke about, about it after, but I don't uh, really remember much about that because um, much of the stuff uh, that I remember, we all, uh, I said to this UFO investigator, so I talked to him a few years back and he had all, you know, his notes saved and everything. Uh, so that's how I remember uh, the details. Uh, yeah, because he, he wrote much of it down and had a map of the path that we ran home when we couldn't run through the woods and uh, stuff like that so he was very thorough with his investigation so i sent you guys those pictures if you want to check them out yeah i want to see how similar they they are to the hopkinsville stuff yeah your mom handled it awesomely how cool of your mom to have you draw them right away oh wow yeah <laughs> that's amazing yeah they're it's almost the exact same thing yeah. Oh, wow. Even with the eyes on the side of the head, too. Holy shit. Yeah. That's wild. So the one that says 120 centimeters above the head? Yeah. That's the one that I drew uh, 
minutes after the event. And the other one is the one I drew uh, for the UFO investigator. So. so you were actually able to see their navel then based on these pictures or was it something else? Apparently, I don't remember the navel, but since I, uh, yeah, it's on both of the drawings I made. So it must have. Uh, yeah, it must have been a prominent feature. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. That's amazing. Their eyes are crazy. Yeah, and that's another thing that I remember. It's it's like the eyes were layered, you know, like it was uh, a pair of eyes, and then on top of those eyes were another uh, thin level of eye. If you understand what I mean. Right. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. like they were stacked almost. Yeah. Exactly. Like they were stacked. Yeah. You can see that in the pictures too. Wow, that's so cool. You still have them. Yeah, that UFO investigator sent them to me when I when I spoke to him. And that's obviously kept you interested in in the paranormal and cryptozoology after you saw the Hopkinsville stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much where it all started. You know, uh, I don't remember anything about any interest before this, and after that, you know, I have experienced quite a few things since, but nothing like uh, seeing you know beings, close encounters of the third kind or yeah i'd say third kind that when you see beings isn't it yeah when you see actual beings yeah wow now what what does that experience mean to you now that we're seeing all this uaps are real in america they're the government's admitting that uaps are real and now they have uh, i might correct me if i'm wrong this guy was part of one of these teams right like arrow or the uap task force he was involved in a top secret team like above arrow Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this, this dude's doing this interview where he's saying that one of their main focuses was retrieving crashed, crashed UFOs, and they have retrieved hundreds of UFOs. Does that make you think it was more of an alien encounter or some cryptid? I think it, um, I have always thought of them as aliens. Right. Because cryptid, I really didn't know what cryptid was back then, you know. Right, when you're aided, I mean, your mind probably told you it had to have been aliens. Yeah, probably, yeah. But how it affected me is I have always known for a fact that we are not alone, you know. Seeing these things in the woods just uh, yeah, cemented. Uh, <laughs> I know what I saw, you know. Uh, so. Right, and then have another event match yours. I mean, that just seals the deal. Pretty much, yeah. But the ones that we saw weren't violent or anything, you know. Like the Hopkinsville case, yeah. they were supposed to be like, yeah, like almost the gremlins from the movie. Right, yeah, trying to destroy the house. Yeah, and the guy, the, that UFO investigator actually interviewed one of the persons involved in the case, one from the family. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the sheriff that was uh, the first guy on scene. He interviewed both of them. Has this investigator written any books or anything? Uh, yeah, but only in Swedish. Right. But he is like the go-to UFO guy in Sweden. That's awesome. So We don't want to keep you anymore, Matthias. Maybe we can call you back and you can tell us some of your other paranormal experiences. Yeah, I have. Quite a few, actually, so. Yeah, that would. There's not really much to the experience, you know, nothing spectacular <laughs> other than fucking beings in the woods, but nothing really happened, you know, so there's not too much to say about it more than, yeah, we we just saw them, you know. Right. Those are those are just as important, though, most of these cases about these weird things. I mean, I was reading rereading about that rockhead jellyfish man from Australia, Mike, and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's so important these weird cases like that. That's it's that's incredible to me. I I I can't believe you uh, experienced that. I'm glad that all they did was check you out and they didn't yeah. flash any images in your mind. Sorry to that dude oh. who who had a rough time, but I'm glad it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the coolest thing is the connection to the Hopkinsville. I think the, they are so similar. It's like they they are the exact being in my opinion they look exactly like wow that's amazing i wonder if there's any 
like um, American researchers, I would be interested in talking to you about it because over here, those guys, that's the, that's it. There's nothing in, there's nothing else like them. Uh, exactly. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, well, thank you for spending this time with us, Matthias. And if you're up to it, uh, send us an email with your address. We'll send you some stickers and prints and stuff for for coming on. And we appreciate you listening. Yeah, no problem. My favorite. Yeah. Book, no. <laughs> Oh man, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope you can use some of it. So, yeah. Oh yeah. There's somebody who else who wrote in, and they they gave us a story, and they thanked us for, you know, after ten years letting people tell their story. And I was like, oh, we've asked before, and we I mean, this is the first time we've ever gotten a response <laughs> from anyone. So, <laughs> yeah. So thank you. We're 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 excited to do this, and it's such a crazy case. Yeah, it really is, yeah. So, but if I if there's anything that I remember that I forgot, I will I will uh, send you guys an email. So great, thank you. Yeah, we'd love that. And I can write down some of the other stuff that I've seen also. So yeah, I'm sure that we'll do another episode where we'll do stories. So uh, we'll definitely call on you again. Yeah, absolutely, no problem, guys. All right, well have it. Have a good night. We appreciate you staying up. Yeah, no problem. I will have a good night. Trust me. All right. Nice. All right. Take it easy. Same, guys. Mike, I didn't dream that we'd get a story this awesome. Yeah. This is essentially the fucking the uh, Hopkinsville Goblins, but in Europe. So I know there's a lot of folklore out of in Europe about um, goblins and trolls and dwarves and things like that, but it's it's just really weird to see the drawing, you know, because it, it you put that up next to the Hopkinsville goblin drawing, and granted, this was a, a little kid that drew this picture, but it matched like just even like specific details, like the way the ears were drawn and the way the eyes looked, like like it's it matches almost exactly. Yeah, almost exactly. And I know that there's other stories about like little people, little trolls, all that type of stuff. But the Hopkinsville Goblin's very specific story. The descriptions of these things are singular to this story. And to hear uh, that there's another encounter with something that's, I, I, in my opinion, exactly the same thing. To me, this Matthias' Matthias's story is a, a revelation that the Hopkins Goblin's we're elsewhere. It's the same things. It's the same beings. And, you know, we're going to have to call them the, the Swedish goblins or something because it's, it's the same creatures being seen somewhere else. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's crazy with all the, um, like that you, you look at the traditional folklore and the beings like the, the ears specifically are, are, um, those ears are, always used to describe the fae you know the long pointed ears they're the elves the goblins the dwarves the brownies the fairies they all have these long pointy ears so so it is interesting that you have these things that match that description but also match the description of something that happened in rural kentucky and without even knowing about it you know like it's not like there's some he he didn't have anything to compare it to. He just drew what he saw and then later learned of the Hopkinsville Goblin case and compared them and was like, holy shit, that's exactly what I saw. But it, it's, I don't know, because traditionally I think the Hopkinsville Goblin case is presented like an alien invasion type of thing because it was, the the prelude to the events was a UFO sighting. So it was, you've got this UFO sighting and then these beings show up, but... Um, if we think about UFOs as not being craft, but maybe like an energy body or, or, uh, like a, a doorway between dimensions rather than an actual vehicle, um, this could be some sort of, uh, spirit or, well, I don't think spirit is really the right word, but you know, it's essentially the same thing, like some sort of, um, I guess other dimensional being something that's not made up of the same stuff our reality is, our our physical reality on this plane of existence. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So thank you, Matthias, for sharing that story with us. We really enjoyed that. That was yeah, so cool. Yeah, so cool. Well, next, we're gonna head on down to Nikki Town. Our buddy Nikki sent us a story, and we'll <laughs> Nikki Town. <laughs> Okay, we've got uh, another story slash email from Nikki. And Nikki writes, Hey guys, super excited to share this with you, although I'm shit at emails and the like. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? I've had weird stuff happen my whole life randomly and have developed a nope mentality because of this. My mom has told me stories of things I'd say or do when I was younger about weird stuff going on too. Unfortunately, my memory is also crap, so I don't remember a lot of it. See, that that tends to happen to me with stuff from being a kid. Like, I have a vague memory of stuff happening that was weird, but... And then, you know, I was a kid, so I don't really remember. Anyway, I'm reading your email. I'm sorry to, to interject. The first experience I remember was when I was like six, though. My grandma had me standing in the corner for some dumb punishment, and I noticed a white, staticky-looking human-shaped form walk behind me and into my bedroom. And when I went to look, it wasn't there, and I got in more trouble for moving. Ha ha. Another time was when I was a freshman in high school. My friends and I heard the school legend of a girl that had hung herself from the auditorium catwalk and decided it was an awesome idea to hold a seance in the green room. More than anything, we seemed to just really freak ourselves out. We ended up spitting up and going home like normal, but later that night I woke to another white glowing humanoid shape sitting at the edge of my bed to which rightfully I got scared and Hitting under my covers, I said, fuck that. Ending up talking to one of my friends that I did this with, and apparently she had the same experience that night. About ten years or so ago, I ended up staying at a friend's house for a bit. I'd sleep on the couch and most of the times work overnight shifts. This experience I have a lot more confidence in, because according to my friend, it was an ongoing thing in that house. So I ended up getting off work and crashing on the couch as I usually do. I was having some trouble falling asleep though. As I was falling asleep, I turned on my side to face the hallway and there was a shadow-like figure standing towards the back bedroom. Obviously it woke me up fully, but I didn't sit up or anything. I just laid there and watched as it took a couple steps, then turned and walked into my friend's kid's room. She was at school, so I was freaking out, but said nope and rolled over. Told my friend about it and she said he is just there. Doesn't cause problems or anything, just shows up from time to time. More recent I've moved into a barn that was renovated on the side to have an apartment. The apartment side is only separated from the storage area by a drywall wall. No insulation or anything on the other side. So I can hear anything that happens in the storage area. One day I got up and was getting ready for work. I just sat down with my cup of coffee. As I was about to take a sip, I hear little bare feet running down the length of the storage area, which is about 20 or 25 feet down the whole thing. Once again, nope mentality. Just the other night though, I'd just gotten in bed and heard a knock on my front door, like four heavy pounds on it. I ignored it because sleep, but Like five minutes later, it did it again. So fed up, I did like in a horror movie and grabbed my sidearm to go check. I clicked on the porch light and opened the door to nothing. I even checked around the building and the rest of the property to no avail. Nothing was there. Well, that's my stuff, so hopefully it wasn't too much. I appreciate you guys wanting to hear from your people, and I'm glad I got to share Oh, I have one more creepy happening shared experience, but I feel I've said a bit, so if you'd like to know, let me know. I do want to know, Nikki. I very much want to know, and so does Mateo. He told me. I thoroughly enjoy the podcast and love you guys' chemistry. Really, the only paranormal podcast I can constantly listen to. Anyway, thank you again, Nikki. Well, thank you, Nikki. 
I completely appreciate you sharing your stories. I want to hear your other stories, so send that in so that I can put my eyeballs on it as well. But thank you for sharing your experiences. Thank you for listening. And I hope that we, you know, don't disappoint you too much in the future. So with Nikki's story here, I was uh, surprised to hear him seeing the same entity twice. He saw one, as he mentioned, when he was young, being punished by being put in the corner, this fuzzy humanoid shape. And then one later after doing that seance thing. And I don't know, to me, I, I really got the impression that something is maybe attached to Nikki or something follows him. Even the footsteps that he heard uh, through the wall in his apartment. I mean, that's that's heavy stuff. That, I mean, seeing a, a white fuzzy shape of a person, I, I consider that heavy, a heavy experience. So I don't know, Nikki, if you've ever looked into... Uh, I don't know, seeing if something's attached itself to you. Maybe if maybe it's not bad. It doesn't seem like it's trying to choke you or stick its finger in your butt or something like that. But, uh, but maybe <laughs> try to look into like a cleanse or something like that. Or maybe, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Or maybe just become friends, become friends with it. Hmm. Make it, make it a fucking, make it some macaroni and cheese and hot dogs and uh, leave it on a tray for it overnight. <laughs> maybe a little beer next to it. Be like, hey, maybe the ghost is hungry. Maybe it's not a ghost. Maybe it's just some fucking weird creature that just hangs out. I mean, it, it would definitely be unnerving, though. Like, like, let's be real. But at least it's not doing things like smashing bottles over your head or, or howling at the moon or anything. Could be worse, I suppose. So if it's not bothering you, it, it, just ignore it and... It's likely you'll uh, be mostly left alone. Honestly, if you make the macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, it'll probably stick around and show up more often because I get the feeling that these things are fucking mooches, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you'll get used to it. I want little Caesars. I mean, you you set me up for a certain lifestyle here, and now you're just taking it away. This is kind of bullshit. <laughs> Making me dinner, and now you're saying get out and... No, no, I'm not getting it. I I want more dinner, please. But you're a ghost. You don't listen, don't don't fucking presume to understand what ghosts need. Ghosts need dinner. <laughs> you're gonna give me dinner. It turns into like a ugly breakup. Where am I supposed to go then? Yeah. Who's gonna feed me? I'm a ghost. I don't got working hands. Well you found me, didn't you? Yeah, I found you, but I'm never gonna find anyone like you again. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? I've already died once and you're killing me again. <laughs> oh, Lord. Breaking up is hard to do. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And breaking up with a ghost, fuck. I mean, what are you going to do, really? I guess the the major takeaway here is don't get involved romantically with ghosts or demons that are haunting your house. It's never going to end well. It's like it's like banging a coworker. <laughs> it's strictly forbidden. Yeah, just don't do it. Oh, look, it's the story I've been waiting for. It's Chris's, what did he say? Uh, industrial techno German accent story. <laughs> Yay. Oh, God. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm so, so sorry. And Chris, go fuck yourself, buddy. <laughs> Fucking son of a bitch. When I was a kid, I stayed at a friend's house who'd recently lost that pet dog to dog heaven or wherever dogs go when they die. It was an old English sheepdog. You can't really mistake that kind of dog for anything else because they are huge and are also ridiculous to look at. Anyway, the lights went off and my friend fell asleep. I stayed awake for a bit, just staring at the wall that was partly illuminated by a streetlight from outside. Out of nowhere, I shizer you not. The black shadow of this dog walks across the wall like it's nothing. It wasn't just for a split second. The shadow of the dog walked the entire length of the room and then vanished into the darkness. I'm telling you, there is nothing in the room that looks like 
a massive English sheepdog that could cast the shadow of the dog moving. Its 2D shadow legs were moving like it was going for a stroll. Well, that shit me up for the rest of the night, and I didn't stay there again after that. Chris, thanks for thanks for doing that. You you cheeky son of a bitch. I hope you enjoyed my shitty take on German accents. German people understand that this was uh, not my fault. I didn't want to do it. I was forced against my will by someone named Warsmith. And when someone named Warsmith tells you to do something, I mean, you could say no. I mean, he does live over in the UK, so I'd probably be okay. But, I mean, he's the fucking Warsmith. You know, it's like a blacksmith, but for war. He's, he may as well be Ares. Maybe he is Ares. Oh, Christ. Is Chris, are you Ares? Fuck. I, I take back everything I said. You're fucking, you're sweet. You're you're a wonderful guy. And uh, your your farts likely smell like roses. Hope you like the beats. Yes. I hope you like the beats. And, and I hope my, my accent pleases you, sir. <laughs> So this uh, this email comes from our truck driving friend Hector, and uh, he didn't exactly send a, send us a story. He kind of had a theory on cryptids, and then asked us some questions. So we'll read the email, we'll, then we'll discuss. Hello, hi Hector. I've been listening to you guys since episode thirty. You poor bastard. <laughs> so I have a theory on Bigfoot, and or most cryptids. You know the case of alien encounters that happened in Brazil? I believe Joe Raffin had a guy not, or maybe it was Joe Rogan, and it was a typo. I'm going to assume it was Joe Rogan because I've never heard Joe Riffin. Uh, so if, if there is a person named Joe Riffin, I apologize and <laughs> just ignore me completely. But he says, I believe Joe Riffin slash Rogan had a guy not too long ago that made a documentary on the event. So basically, there was an alien roaming around in this town had an encounter with the locals, the military caught it, took it to a hospital for x-rays, U.S. government took over somehow, and it was never heard from again. I think this is the Vargina sighting. It sounds like it, at least, if there's another one. Um, it's very similar. We actually covered it on the show a few couple months ago, maybe. Yeah, I think a couple months ago. Yeah, I think that he is talking about that case. If, if I mean, it's it's the, that documentary came out right around that time or recently so when we, we yeah. did that episode I, you actually were ahead of the game on that one you had heard that oh was yeah, I? you had heard that that documentary was going to come out so we covered it right away and then next week oh that's right it came out and everybody was talking about and it. i still haven't seen the documentary no we should watch that yeah we should <laughs> yeah maybe we'll do a patreon watch along or something at the same time, there was UFO sightings. They said the town stank for a while after the... Yeah, this is definitely the Vargino one. But he he gets back to... Uh, he said he was thinking the guy said the UFO scene was possibly on a recovery mission. So what if Bigfoot is an alien surveying the forest for whatever reason, and that's why you never see a dead body or encounters are minimal? What if all cryptids are doing the same? There's some type of aliens conducting research and collecting data. So that that's kind of interesting. Like we we've talked about the idea that cryptids were um like part of an intergalactic zoo or something, and and what if they're just like escaped or 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 maybe maybe we're it's like South Park and we're part of a fucking reality TV show and they're like oh let's see what happens when when we when we drop the devouring maw and then people fucking start reporting seeing Mongolian death worms or something and they just call it the devouring maw. I don't know. And then we just give it the, the like like they they drop Mothman down here and they've got a completely different name for it and then we start calling it Mothman. They're like, what well, fuck it assholes. That's not its name. <laughs> it's not fucking Mothman. You may be on to something there, Hector. I know, Mike, when we did the Mothman stuff early on, um, you had brought up the theory that since the UFO sightings happened, that maybe Mothman was some type of left-behind animal, pet, escaped animal or a pet. And then uh, later on, yeah. we're actually reading about that. That's an actual theory. There's, uh, And then we go into the Bigfoot being an alien. 
you know, because there's so like you've covered many times the Chestnut Ridge shit. Uh, how how many Bigfoot encounters right. are not normal Bigfoot encounters? So, right, right, and uh, I think that the the and it, we'll, I'll be getting more into that in future episodes with uh, you know Bigfoots being fairies and stuff. But um, yeah, I I don't necessarily think that they're aliens. I think it's the other way around. Like whatever whatever these cryptid things are, I think it's also whatever's behind their appearance and disappearance is also what's behind um ufos and ghosts and aliens like i th- i do think that it's all connected um but i think if we're looking at it from as being just like aliens from another planet or another star system or whatever i think that's cutting off too many other possibilities and i think it's a lot weirder than that um, based on all of the reports on on all of the the high strangest that that takes place um, with overlapping phenomena, like we we've talked about Bigfoot being poltergeist before, and it's it's a similar sort of thing. A lot of times, lights in the sky are also observed. So it's uh, I, I I do think everything's all connected in that way, and and I definitely think that. I I don't think that they're separate phenomena. I guess is basically what it all boils down to. Well, when all that weird shit gets sorted out a thousand years from now, I mean, I hope when it comes to cryptids, it is a simple answer. I I really love and hope and pray that when it comes to cryptids, it's just what it is. These weird rogue abomination things that exist on this earth for whatever fucking reason. I mean, I, I I don't want I don't like yeah. mixing my aliens and cryptids too much. <laughs> oh, I love it, man! Make it a fucking salad. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Hector, for writing in. We appreciate it, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens with cryptids. Cryptids are far and few between these days, and it bums me out. I want some small backwoods town to report some weird beast that's of some shape and size unseen by man. Yes, please. If if you or someone you love has a hole in your backyard with with a creature that tries to eat your dog or children, please contact the Whatcast and let us know. All right, next up is Rob. In our Discord, he's known as Blue. And Rob is a rad dude. Uh, Rob also has a podcast called The Spooky Boys. Be sure to check that out. I know that a lot of people, if you're like me, you're picky with your podcast. And it's been really cool to get to know Rob in the Discord for a while now. I mean, he's just a rad dude. He's hilarious. That one of the first things I told him is, "Dude, you need a podcast." And he said, "I have one." So, <laughs> go be sure to go check out Spooky Boys, 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 Boys. All right. So now we are joined by Rob. Rob, you are a fellow podcaster, aren't you, sir? Yeah. Um, is it okay if I shout that out real quick? Please do. No. No. <laughs> we don't. We don't support other podcasts. Here. <laughs> Boo! No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead I'm, and do all this stuff for me. <laughs> yes, I run a podcast called uh, Spooky Boys from uh, Detroit, Michigan. We uh, we kind of talk about everything. We we talk about anything from like I, it's not every episode we're going to talk about like the paranormal or anything, but it's mostly all like movies, comics, video games, etc. We're we're in our late 20s so all of it is like early early 2000s nostalgia kind of everything in the everything in the scene kind of podcast nice I, I tried i did my best trying to summarize that as much as i could <laughs> yeah i'm definitely interested i'm gonna i'll okay, shoot me a link to whatever you want people to go visit mostly and i'll put it on our website gotcha and you could also find me at um blues.tunes on instagram yeah that's where i art and uh comics and stuff so yeah as well as as well as a podcaster you're a hell of an artist as well thank you i appreciate that yeah (laughs) i take inspiration from spooky high strangeness stuff uh horror etc nice so you got a story that comes from uh it's it's a secondhand story but we had another story shared by someone that was so weird and then yours is you'd mentioned it being kind of similar which blew me away yeah it's really weird um 
so uh, it's it's a cousin, but uh, it's a cousin of mine, a relative, who also lives in Detroit. And uh, I should also give a little bit of backstory to this. Um, in Detroit, there's there's like a few different uh, legends, and, and one of them is called the Nine Rouge, which is I guess the uh, I, I kind of forget what it's called, the Red Devil of Detroit. And it's supposedly a, uh, God, it's like a Native American rock spirit that was cited before each and every tragedy that kind of befell the village of Detroit before. Please don't censor that. I swear that's not a curse word. <laughs> I was going to say, this is my new, new favorite place. Hell of a name. <laughs> Hell of a name. So apparently it would show up kind of before each and every tragedy that kind of befell the the village before it was like a thing, before it was like a larger city. Um, and during the 1700s, I believe, during the uh, American kind of, it was the Indian-French War where it kind of popped up and allegedly danced upon the bodies of the dead. Ooh. So that was pretty, pretty metal. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of like the, the, there's definitely like a lot of weirdness and strangeness in the city. And uh, a lot of people don't really know about that. And, and it's not really like something that you hear about a lot, I guess, in, uh, in larger kind of metropolitan areas. But plenty of people around here have stories. So that's it's always interesting to hear people's uh, like different experiences and stuff. You know, I had been talking to my cousin about this recently. I'll, I'll kind of keep his name. He wanted to be kind of anonymous just for prosperity's sake. You know, I know this stuff can kind of bring people negative attention and things like that. Uh, I could probably send you guys links or whatever to, to him to kind of like confirm that story, whatever. But uh <clears throat> Southwest Detroit is kind of like on the outskirts of the the major city, and there are uh, two major mining companies that are kind of like in here. Uh, there's the God, I forget what the salt brand is called, but it's like the one where you see like the girl holding the, the umbrella. Is it Morton or Yeah, Morton. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, so it's Morton Salt Mining and uh, Mobile that that mainly uh drill here and mine here so there's like huge mines underneath the city i think it even kind of extends into the larger city as well but you could even like take tours of it's kind of cool but uh i kind of find that really weird because i sorry i'm trying to recall some of this but uh i i know that in appalachia there's like tons and tons of tunnels that kind of go in and out of the mountains. And with that came the Kentucky goblins story. And my cousin had a goblin story of his own. Sorry. It took so so long to get to that. But, oh, no, it's all right. Um, so he was kind of living uh, near, I believe Woodmere cemetery, which is, I, I might be mistaken with that. He was living near a really specific cemetery when, when he was younger. Um, he had heard something slamming on the side of the house, uh, ran outside and was with like everyone else who had lived there. Um, and then I, I guess they didn't really see anything. They looked on the side of the house. Uh, they didn't see anything else. And they all kind of went back inside. But something kept knocking at his door. He ran back outside and he saw this like short, like he said it was about three feet tall, um, orange, bronzish skin, uh, large ears, red beady eyes. And it was just kind of like staring at it. And it was it had like the screen door and was staring directly at him and kind of like slamming it over and over again. Oh, and, like almost taunting him. Yeah. Oh, that's creepy. Like I don't like that. Trickster, kind of like I'm doing this to fuck with you. Yeah. Kind of. Um. They're so they're kind of like staring at each other in silence, and it's just like slamming the door. 
and he runs to go get somebody. Uh, he kind of looks back around the corner and it's gone. And he was about to tell, I think the only person that he had told was his mom before uh, she ended up passing away. And then <clears throat> also his brother who also passed away. So those are the only people that really knew that story. It's, it's not a story that he like tells everyone at all. So I could tell that he was like kind of dead serious telling me this. And I really did my best to withhold any kind of like information about, you know, any similarities to the Kentucky Goblin story when, uh, when I was talking to him. Um, and then I ended up showing him pictures and kind of like telling him the story afterwards had to keep my mouth shut because I didn't want to like splurge immediately and be like, Holy shit. You saw fucking goblins, dude. <laughs> I didn't want to see his reaction when I pulled out the fucking goblins and be like, Oh, you're a fucking insane person. But right. Yeah. Not lead his, his, uh, story or anything like that. So I, I showed him a few pictures and I could just see the look on his face. Like he just completely turned pale and saw this shit, and, uh, yeah, he, he pretty much confirmed that was what he saw. Uh, I know the original Goblin story, they were, like, more of, like, a silverish color, like a green glow, but... Uh, yeah, they, they said they were, well, I think they just referenced them being metallic. Yeah. The way but... he, he said it was just, like, like, br- like a bronzish, bronzish metallic color. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so creepy. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he even said like three toes, three fingers, um, about the same height. You know, it, it's pretty much as close as you can get without it actually being it. And the thing that got me the most was like, oh, you know, it's like a short goblin, whatever. It could have been any kind of like weird spirit, yada, yada, you know, messing with them. But the thing that got me was the ears because it's like that's the the signifying thing and the bronzish kind of like metallic skin. Th- those are like the two main things that, that usually kind of indicate that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, uh, it, it freaked me out. He, he had goosebumps telling it. So, wow. I was like, and, uh, you know, it's, I guess you never really hear these kinds of stories from people in like larger metropolitan areas. And to hear somebody with like a legitimate, you know, what I believe to be legitimate experience, you know, kind of surprises me. And uh, the more I've kind of like looked into close friends and family, you know, the more they have experiences. Like my grandfather um, in a different area of Detroit uh, called Del Rey, which is kind of more uh, a bit more of a rundown area now. But back in like the 80s and 70s used to be a little bit better. And he allegedly, allegedly saw while he was hanging out on on his front porch with uh, some friends and family, saw a literal just disc shaped UFO just sitting there and uh, green, shiny. And then it shot off into the night sky (laughs) and he spent his entire life kind of trying to figure out what that was and trying to like learn whatever the hell that was by looking in the Bible. And it's like, it didn't really, he was extremely religious. It didn't really fit into his worldview. So that's what kind of makes me believe him is that he, he looked this stuff up until the day that he died, trying to figure out what it was. Wow. Detroit's an active state. There's a lot going on there as far as paranormal stuff. Yeah. Michigan's real weird. Um, I'm, I'm not super sure what's going on with like, the northern parts of Michigan or the UP and stuff like that. But I know we have like dog man as, is like a thing. Um, there's somebody else in the discord who has, uh, doesn't have a dog man story, but it, I, I know that he kind of lives out that way. Oh yeah. You also have the, the moth Michigan moth man as well. What? <laughs> there's also the Michigan, the Lake Michigan moth man. You don't tell me that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was the last flying humanoids episode uh we did mike mentioned that he has he had a, he got a couple books and he's like dude i still i got like two or three episodes of stuff on just the michigan mothman 
Which I had never heard of either. I was like, what the fuck? So. Do, um, do tell, Mike. I, well, we did we did an episode up that covered sightings up until I think 2000. And now I've got a, another episode worth of, of more recent sightings. That sounds like a really, really spooky episode. I, I might have somebody with uh with an experience but i'm not sure if it's just like a haunted house type situation or or if it's something else hmm so i kind of my my best friend uh his family lived on the next street as me and i'm kind of still living in my childhood home as, as currently because of the economist uh so back in the 80s i believe she was sleeping in her in her room and uh on her second room floor or second floor uh bedroom she would hear like knocks on her window and uh see just kind of like a silhouette standing pretty much where you would assume there would be like something outside like a ladder or something but there was nothing there when she looked um and then i also had an experience when i was a little kid uh I had a different bedroom on the second floor and I had just kind of like woke up, was watching uh, adult swim back when it was cool, (laughs) (laughs) like home movies and stuff. I remember specifically it was home movies. It was either home movie that was playing. I fucking love that show so much. Oh, Michelle. (laughs) Yeah. The the don't stick marbles in your nose episode fucking top tier. <laughs> I'll do my favorite bit, the conservative vampires. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> so yeah, I remember watching that and uh I just heard this like knock coming from the window behind the TV. And I'm on the second floor. We didn't have a like a tree or anything in the backyard so i don't think it really could have been like birds or anything that was like near the window and no tree so i don't i'm not really sure you know if it was like something knocking against the window by you know just by pure coincidence um and i remember looking up and just seeing like a silhouette in the window and just kind of freaking out and uh, throwing the covers over my head and eventually passing out after hearing like three more knocks. And oh, then, yeah. Oh, so do you consider that like a, like a shadow person experience? Maybe. Um, my sisters had a couple ex- of experiences in this house. Um, I, I hate to drone on about it, but back when she was uh, like, we had just moved into the house. So I think she was about like, uh, 10 or 11. And I was like six and we were both sleeping in that same room and we had just kind of moved in. And I remember from my perspective, I remember her just waking up one night and freaking out, running all across the house, flipping on lights and like screaming. And me as a little kid, I just kind of assumed like, ah, whatever, you know, she's, she, ah, she's being funny. Ha ha. Meanwhile, she's having like an existential crisis <laughs> as an 11 because she saw, a, I guess, a shadow person um, for like every day for like a month straight. She would wake up at around the same time and just kind of see something in the corner. Um, it, it was just like a large shadow. And every night it would just get closer and closer, closer until one night just kind of stopped, uh, stopped for like a week, week or two. And then that night that I remember her waking up, um, she woke up and saw this thing directly in her face. And that's what made her like freak out and run, run all around the house. So that's a pretty weird situation. Yeah, that, um, that sounds rough. That's terrifying. Yeah, like uh, we've had our name, uh, like all of our names called. Uh, myself, when I when I was back in like sixth grade, it was me and my sister home alone and kind of heard my name uh, being called out and nobody else was home. 
and she heard it too and she kind of freaked out because you know it sounded like it was coming from behind her but the feeling that i got was like somebody breathing down the back of my neck when and i was like right up against a wall so it's kind of impossible for anything else to be the explanation for that right right and this is all the same place yeah and you're there yep. and it's you're there now would you consider that place haunted with, with the experiences that you described? That's the thing. I don't even, I don't even know if I would consider it like a, like a deep haunting. Um, I feel like it kind of comes and goes, but I guess that's kind of how it is for anyone with like a, a haunted house type situation. Like, right. That's, that's it, regular. That's common. It always like comes and goes, you know, um, around the time that, I think I was in sixth grade and I was only like 12 then. Um, that's when that experience happened with my name being called. And then it just kind of stopped until uh, one of my nieces was born. And then it kind of slowly started to happen again. And we've had a few different experiences over the past week or so, but I would not the past week or so, but the past like couple of months, sorry. Um, and I, it could be totally, you know, a, a different experience from what uh, my best friend's mom kind of had. Um, so I don't know if those two are related in any sort of way or if it's just like a, a haunting thing. Right. What, what do you make of that, Mike? All those different experiences at the same place? Well, it's it's what I always think. Same goddamn thing I always think. It's It's just proof that that you can't put the paranormal in one little box. It's right. not just one thing. It's it's multiple things, and it's really kind of the way that we are perceiving it kind of shapes the experience in a way. But, you know, you can have multiple different types of experiences, and you can put them all in different boxes, but at what point do you just say, this is all related to the same thing? It's not just aliens and ghosts and, and fairies, you know. It's it's the, the same drum I keep beating. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, uh, like, there's different areas of Detroit, or at least different neighborhoods that are around us that definitely feel, like, weird. I've had haunted experiences at different friends' house, uh, my dad had even saw a UFO in, in Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park is definitely like a weirder area in Michigan. Um, I've had like several friends who have moved there from here and then have had like weird shit follow them. Uh, there's multiple friends with like haunted houses. Um, and I don't really know how to explain that kind of situation. When you see like the all these different kind of experiences. It's so strange to me. Yeah. See, that's, that's kind of how I grew up where like every other house had an experience. Every other friend you had had, had experienced something paranormal. Yeah. It's, I guess it's just the area. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, the, the main tribe here was, uh, OG boy. And I'm not sure. I, you know, I, I don't know anyone in particular, Aside from like one guy who's uh, part native, one of my buddies who's been on my show a few times, Victorino, um, I think he might have some family with uh, with some legends and stuff. But the only one that I really know of is uh, is Bear Walker, which is, I guess, our our state's version of the Skinwalker <laughs> legend. Um, I, I'm not really sure where it originates, but I remember. I guess reading that from uh, Linda Godfrey. Oh wow, cool! So that's that's a thing that's here. <laughs> I'm not sure how deep it goes or, or anything than that. Um, I could even be a little wrong on the name, but I I do know that it's called the uh, Bear Walker. Bear Walker, that's awesome. And uh, kind of reading into it more, it's it's essentially the same thing, Skinwalker. It's but I'm not sure if those two legends relate or if it's, you know, people from one tribe leaving, you know, to the West coast and kind of starting their own thing or, but it's weird because you kind of see those kind of shapeshifter legends everywhere. 
and they're all kind of extremely similar when you look at them. Yeah, it's. I mean, especially in American culture, it seems like every every Native American tribe had tales of some type of shapeshifter. Yeah, um, one of my buddies uh, who's Mexican, um, his his family told him about something called Nahuales, which are again the same kind of thing. And even when you look at uh, European werewolves, like ancient European. Uh, legends and of, of shape shifters and stuff they usually do the same thing they have a piercing glance uh a pelt or some kind of belt that makes them transform yeah yeah kind of interesting yeah just one, another one of those shared phenomena throughout multiple cultures all over the world yeah makes you think man yeah, those are those are the ones I find interesting. There, I mean, there has to be something to it. There has to be something to it. Places that never had contact with each other back then share the same legends. Yeah, tribes that never met, Mesoamerican tribes mm-hmm. it's before they had even come to the United States. It's oh man, it's freaky, some freaky shit, dude. Yeah. It sounds like you live in a, a freaky state too, in a freaky house. <laughs> I appreciate you guys letting me come on and and uh, drone on about Michigan weirdness. Oh no, it's awesome! Yeah, we'll have to have uh, you and and your co-host come on the regular show, dude, and 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 introduce your your show. That's one thing I've been wanting to do more is is spotlight some good podcasts and people. Definitely, man. I'd I'd love to do it sometime. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely set it up then. For sure. Thank you so much for spending the time with us, Rob. It was cool to talk to you. Again, thank you guys for bringing me on. Yeah, man. Have a good night. You too. I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, go check me out on Spooky Boys Podcast on uh, pretty much every platform, YouTube, Spotify, um, kind of wherever you can get your podcasting fix. And uh, go check out my Instagram, uh, blues.tunes, and see my comics and stuff. Absolutely. Thank you again, Rob. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a good night, brother. You too. But he had, I mean, he he told me about his story after we had talked to, planned to talk to Matthias. So when he said that he had a goblin story to share, I had to say, what the fuck's going on here? What's, I mean... Maybe we need right. to send these stories to the new Kirks, dude, because this is nuts. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird, too. And and uh, as far as I know, neither one of these guys talked about it to each other. It, it is interesting that we got two unconnected goblin stories for the same show from two different people that have never interacted before. Right. And here we were thinking the Hopkinsville Goblins was a, a rare type of case. You know, maybe we should rewatch Hellier. Maybe they were, that's exactly what they're saying. Goblins are fucking everywhere. Yeah, dude. And goblins are in your face. I remember we had uh, Jade who talked about the, the goblin thing that she had with where it stabbed the knife in the wall. Yeah, the, on the reservation. That's, yeah, that was a creepy, right. creepy story. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? What if all the like the little troll and goblin stuff is just different species of whatever the Hopkinsville goblins were? You know, maybe maybe calling in the Hopkinsville goblins was hitting the nail on the head. They're just a species of goblins. Yeah, maybe and that's just that's that's where they live. They're like we live in the mines, dude. Like just hang out in the mines. But then again, in Matthias' story, you know, there's there's oh in and in Hopkinsville, there's a UFO sighting shortly beforehand. Uh huh. But like I said, maybe it's not an actual spaceship. Maybe it's it's like the uh, connected to like a breach between worlds. Ooh, we'll call him a goblin hole. Yes, the glowing goblin hole. <laughs> the next letter we got, or email letter, fucking, what am I talking about? A letter. The next email we got. <laughs> the missive was sent, and we received it post haste. Delivered straight to my hand by a carrier pigeon named Steve. <laughs> it was an email, not not a a smoke signal or yeah. or message in a bottle, but it was sent anonymously. 
very nice and kind email. Thank you so much, anonymous person, for the kind words and sending in your story. So we'll, we're going to take a listen to that right now. Hey guys, I love your show and I'm a long time listener since 2016, I think. Each week I look forward to receiving a notification that you've uploaded a new episode. Thank you for what you do and I hope in the future you will choose to do more episodes on listener stories. We, we fully intend on it. I'm sure your fans have plenty of stories to tell, and it's much easier to share them with kindred spirits in the community you've created. I appreciate the shit out of that, so that, that's, that's what we try to do. So it's, I'm, I'm glad that you, are, uh, uh, you're, you feel like you're, you're part of the community here and feel comfortable enough sharing, sharing your story. Um, and b back to the email. I, for one, have often wondered if I've experienced paranormal activity because I'm interested in the subject, or am I interested in the subject because I'm looking for answers to my experiences. Here's one such story which I hope you will use in your upcoming 10-year anniversary of the Whatcast. I'd just like to preface this by saying I wish to remain anonymous. You got it, buddy. I was about six years old, so it must have been around 1993 or 94. I remember it was Easter. I remember this particularly well because my grandmother on my mother's side was a deeply religious woman and she would always give us gifts on big Christian holidays. My grandmother was a poor woman who lived in public housing so there wasn't much money for gifts, but feeling that it was important for her to teach us the value of these holidays, she'd either make the gifts herself or buy them at some sort of dollar store or discount store, somewhere cheap. I have two siblings a brother and a sister. At this time, my brother was about eight and my sister was about three. Like always, my grandmother gave us each a gift. This year, though, I remember my siblings were both jealous of what I got. A toy clown. I know people are sometimes afraid of clowns, but there was nothing menacing about it. This clown was cartoonish and jovial and very benign. It was plastic and hollow. It had a big round head and it was dressed like a firefighter with a firefighter's helmet and jacket. This part of its getup was red, but its boots were black. It was probably about 8 or 10 inches tall and it was holding an axe against its chest. What made this toy alluring was it had three wheels under the boots and it could move around in straight lines. It also had a whistle that would, well, whistle when it whirred around on the floor. It had a red strobe light on top of its helmet that would rotate like an old-timey fire truck. I should mention it operated on batteries. The reason why I was given this toy is because my father is a firefighter, and that's what I wanted to be when I got older. In any case, my siblings and I were playing with our toys when my sister, who was just a toddler, fell on the clown breaking the head off. The head was hanging on by two wires that connected the batteries to the strobe light. The brake must have severed the power supply because the clown stopped working altogether. No more buzzing around on the wheels. No more red flashing strobe light. No more whistle. So my mom picked the broken thing up off the floor and put it on a shelf in our attached garage and closed the kitchen door that connected the garage to our house. I was very upset and she had put the broken toy on a higher shelf because she didn't want it within my reach. It was getting late and we went to bed. I shared a bedroom with my brother at this time. We had a bunk bed. I was on the bottom bunk and he was on the top bunk. We went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I feel something isn't right. I remember the feeling and it's difficult to describe. I'm wide awake and something feels off. It was almost like the feeling of being watched, but much more intense. Then I could hear something coming from the hallway. It was faint, but as I listened, I could make it out more clearly. Something was whistling, over and over again with long pauses in between. It still gives me the creeps as I'm writing this. Now I was frightened and I decided to go to the top bunk to wake my brother up. When I climbed up there, I saw he was already awake and I asked him, Do you hear that? He said he could hear it as well. 
We continued to listen and soon realized the whistling sound was slowly making its way toward us. We lived in a single story ranch house and from the top bunk we could see down the hallway, almost straight to the kitchen. My brother and I could do nothing but watch and wait. We were both petrified. We were both little kids and scared. We were holding on to each other and shuddering with fear. Then we could see the red light coming down the hallway, headed straight for our room. I never actually saw what it was, because once it reached the threshold of our room, we threw the covers over us. I remember us lying there beneath the blankets and shaking in terror. Then I don't remember anything. I don't remember falling asleep. The next morning, we told my mom what happened. Somehow this toy was working again. It came to life and got out of the garage and entered the house in the middle of the night. She went back into the garage to check that it was there, and there it was, still sitting broken on the top shelf. We insisted she throw it away, and I think she did. I think I was afraid for a couple of days until the trash man came and took it away. Years later, this memory has stuck with me. I've tried to dismiss it as a dream or my imagination, but my brother remembers it too. For a long time, he refused to talk about it at all. Everyone in my family remembers that toy in some way. Sometimes when it bothers me, I'll bring it up with my mother. Just recently, I brought it up again and I found out that my great-grandmother loved clowns. She passed away around that time. She was the matriarch of our family. It is worth noting that the old Italians on that side of my family were very superstitious and sometimes practiced a sort of folk magic. My mother's maternal grandmother is said to have been a stregheria. We still wear Cornicello amulets. To this day, I know this happened. I just don't know how to explain it. I believe that the house was haunted. Whenever something odd happened there, whenever whatever was in that house wanted to make itself known to us, I always got that same feeling. Congratulations on 10 years of the Whatcast. If you choose to use this story, I hope you will read it and add some cool music. Done and done. Thank you so much. That's some that's some classic stuff. That's scary. Yeah, super creepy. And the fact he had the fear. He got hit with the fear, man. And that's what woke him up. Like, isn't that weird? You're sleeping. You are asleep. And then you wake up. Like, whatever whatever this thing is, woke him up. Or her. I don't, I don't want to presume, but it, it's just like one of those, one of those things. Like, your, your body knows something fucky is going on. So you get woken up just in time to witness the fuckery. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't think the holy shit alarm would be strong enough to wake anybody up. That's uh, maybe the anonymous person is more in tune to their holy shit alarm than we are. Yeah, but then they then the, they had fucking missing time, oh. or well, I don't know if it's they they you know they just don't remember anything. So I would consider that missing time when you when you're awake, you're terrified, and then the next morning comes. Man, it's weird. Yeah. And the fact that that it's not only he remember, not only this person remembers it, but their brother remembers it too. So weird. That's like uh, me seeing the Easter Bunny and my sister concurring that. Just like uh, the story we're going to close with. And this is, uh, we wanted to close with this one because this is from Miss Nikki. Miss Nikki is a friend of ours. She is, uh, like I said in the, the interview, Nikki is good people. You instantly like Nikki. I trust Nikki. Knowing Nikki, I think it was a little bit brave of her to tell this story. I think that this is... A, a type of paranormal story as somebody who has a who does a podcast about the paranormal this is a type of story you you pray to get you hope to get yeah i feel like this was was told on the wrong podcast <laughs> this the, the story shouldn't have been on our podcast it should have been on on fucking dog man encounters yeah or or like coast to coast or something like that because yeah yeah Coast to coast call in segment. Yeah, this is nuts. But this is it's fucking weird, man. It is. It blows my mind. What I mean, I couldn't believe it when she was telling me. And I got to read part of the story. 
I didn't know how it ended. And it just, I didn't see it going that way. <laughs> yeah. So let's check that out. All right, we are joined by Miss Nikki. And Miss Nikki is what we call, where I'm from, good people. And Miss Nikki has a scary story to share with us for our anniversary here. Thank you for coming on, Miss Nikki. Uh, a lot of people don't like coming on and talking to us. <laughs> I don't blame them. I'm totally excited. Thank you for having me. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for joining us. So 10 years of the butt cast. <laughs> I thought we were the slut cast. Have I been doing the wrong show this whole time? <laughs> so you guys are the best. Oh, thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. And again, we appreciate you coming on to talk to us. So uh, whenever you want, just regale us with your story. I got to read a good part of it, and uh, I'm excited to hear how it ends. Yeah, I had a whole another section <clears throat> that I was going to, you know, wrap it up with. And then you were like, hey, do you want to come on? And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So I guess I'll just start at the beginning. So I was like five, six years old-ish. We lived at my great-grandparents' house. Myself, my mom, and my dad. I didn't have any siblings yet. That's important later. And my great-grandfather, also important to note, he was my step great-grandfather he was not my blood he never had kids or anything and didn't have like a high tolerance for children but he tried with me because obviously i'm charming so i was when i was five as well but... <laughs> <laughs> that didn't change okay everybody no no not at all um but he you know he tried to like connect with me any way that he could and he was he was strange he was a really strange old man he always had on a wife beater, jeans, black belt, and house shoes, slippers. Never saw the man in, like, actual shoes. And his wife beater was always stained. He smoked a pipe. He had, like, his chair that he sat in. He was just a really old, gruff man. But he thought I was okay. And he would do really weird things, I guess. Anybody else hearing this is going to be like, that's really fucking weird. But he, he said he would catch back in the attic of the house. The house didn't have an attic. I didn't think about this until I was much older, but at, at the time I was five. And he had these bats that he would show me that he caught in like pickle jars and mason jars in some sort of liquid. I don't know what it was. I was a small kid. Um, it was odd, but also really fascinating. Like if, Especially back in, and you guys know, y'all, y'all are like, we're the same age. So back then, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have all of this in your face, like, check out everything all the time. So when somebody so showed you something cool, it was cool. It was fascinating, even if it was a little gross and a little weird. Oh, yeah. I would have shat my pants if my great-grandpa fucking had a bat in a jar. That would have been the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> right. Exactly. So multiple times. Many bats. There were many bats. Um, every time he he felt like hanging out with me. It was a bat in a jar. So time goes by, whatever, we eventually move out, and we visited often. My great-grandmother's daughter, who was my great-aunt, she would come visit for summer. So we visited a lot. My dad and his aunt were very close. So anytime I would come visit, George would show me other weird things. I'm sorry, that was his name. His name was George. And it escalated from, like, dead bats to... He was telling me that there was a wolf that lived in the house, like a werewolf. Huh. And yeah, and he told me all about the werewolf. He described it to me, this, that, and the other. And he, he would tell me when he heard the wolf last night and whatever. And eventually that escalated to him recording the wolf. So when we would come visit, he'd, Nikki, I've got, um, I saw the wolf last night. I've got a recording for you. And he had one of those, you know, handheld tape recorders, those old silver handheld tape recorders yeah and he would play the wolf for me and the interesting thing about it to me like retrospectively is that it sounded more like a guttural growl from a man than an animal but it was still fucking scary yeah like it's scary <laughs> like the, this wolf was in the house and this is what it sounds like <clears throat> so that went on for quite a while 
and he built it up and built it up and built it up. And I don't have like a specific timeline because I was really young, but I remember these things vividly. I had been able to go over there and sleep over one night. And it was strange because these, I mean, they're my great grandparents. They were very old and I was very young. And it's this old Victorian house, huge, like ridiculously enormous. So I go and I'm just hanging out with these old people. They set me up like a little sleeping area in my great grandmother's sewing room and just, just basic stuff. You know, I'm a kid. I made macaroni and cheese with my great grandmother, whatever. And then of course it's like 8 PM. So we all have to go to bed. So get in bed and I lay there and wait for the house to become quiet because I'm a kid and I don't want to get in trouble. And once the house is like completely dark and silent, I know they've gone to bed or whatever. I have to pee. <laughs> so, so I, kind of tiptoe to the bathroom and in I have to like make people visualize this because nowadays our bathroom there's no space in there you walk in it's a sink it's a counter it's a toilet it's a tub yeah the houses that were built way back in literally 1918 is when this house was built it had this long bathroom and honestly Mike you you live in like an old house right yeah Okay, but you, my bathroom here, we've got, well, we we built one, we built a half bath, but the bathroom upstairs, it's it's pretty small. But I know that the upstairs, um, <clears throat> the layout up there has changed over the years, so I don't know how it looked originally. Oh, okay, well, so this one, it, the house was built in the early 1900s, so it's many many rooms, and they were all huge. Like, all of the rooms. There was a hallway that went from the front door to the back door. Like, it's a beautiful home. If I ever had a lot of money, I would buy it and fix it up. But neither here nor there. So the bathroom, you go in, to your right is a clawfoot tub, no shower, a toilet, and then a room where women in in the 40s, 50s, 60s, I'm guessing. The powder room? The powder room, yes, yes. It had a powder room. I didn't know if anybody would know that term. Um, and then on the left-hand side, there was a sink and like a, a gas heater on the wall. So it was huge. You know, you you had plenty of space to like walk in and someone be behind you and you not know it. So I walk into the bathroom. I turn on the light, push button, switch. No switch. It was push buttons. That's how old this house is. Walk in, since you know, something behind me, the door is closing, I turn around, and there's the wolf. The wolf that has been built up in my mind, and I've been told about for months and months and months. Now, when you say wolf, do you mean, like, actual, literal, like, animal wolf? Or are we talking, like, some sort of anthropomorphic wolf? Or, like, a ghost wolf? We're talking werewolf. So, like, standing upright on two legs? Like, dogman style? Yes, we're talking like, that's what I was saying a bit ago. You may have broken up on that um, teen wolf, wolf, not. Okay. Was he wearing a letterman's jacket then? (laughs) (laughs) Sunglasses? No, but he did have on jeans. Did he ask you for a keg? (laughs) Did he skateboard? No, okay, so teen wolf's dad, like Michael J. Fox's dad. Nice, okay. Okay, all right. Yeah. No, but it was more, it was, that's the best comparison I could, I can come up with because it wasn't like American Werewolf in London, like, rah, Yeah, like, like a, a four-legged, yeah, it was an upright humanoid type thing. No, it was, yes, exactly. Thick black fur, yellow eyes, claws, but not like. Sounds like Michael Jackson from the Thriller video. Seriously, it's very similar. It is very similar. Ooh, yeah, good um, draw, Mike. He has a little bit too. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so tell me, did did he have a Letterman's jacket though? For real, I, I need to know. No, no, sh- no. Sh- oh, I've never been more disappointed in my life. Oh, I'm so sorry. But he did have I'm a. So he had jeans on though. Yes. See, that was the thing, man. He had on the jeans. If you recall, a few minutes ago, I specified what George wore all of the time. Yeah. And it was the jeans and the belt. He had on no shoes. His feet were black and talon with fur and claws. 
hands kind of larger and curved and then not not like not like claws like talon-esque like longer fingernails that were curved and pointy if that makes any sense um the thing is though i was not scared of him probably because i didn't know if i was dreaming if this was real am i imagining this (laughs) etc i was a kid you know so i just stood there staring at it and he stood there staring at me and it was like the (sighs) (sighs) that kind of breathing yikes like a Almost like a growling breathing. Yeah, like a dog when it's trying to, like starting to vocalize. Yes, like exaggerated breathing. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do anything but stare at him. So I never peed. (laughs) I left the bathroom hastily. I would have peed. And I... (laughs) On myself. (laughs) Well, see, that's the thing. I wasn't, like, afraid of him or it or whatever. Like, I... I was not scared. I think I was really just in disbelief Hmm. that because this is this was something that was built up to me in my mind. And it started with the baths and jars and then it went to there's a wolf in the house house and then it went to here's the wolf. I recorded him last night. And now all of a sudden I see this wolf, wolf man, werewolf, whatever. Do you think you were unafraid because it was familiar to you? Maybe that would be the only thing that would make sense. Mm-hmm. But this is where it gets interesting. Okay. So I went back to bed and I never saw the werewolf again. George was still there. He was alive. It was fine. But it never came up again after that. He never showed me any more recordings. He never showed me any more bats. He, it just like, it just never happened. And much later into young adulthood, my brother, <laughs> just casually, because my brother and I are pretty close, he, but he is six years younger than me. So this happened, you got to remember, this happened to me when I was like five, six-ish, right? When he was roughly five, six-ish, he had an experience with the wolf that I was never privy to until we were young adults. He just, we were shooting the shit one day and he's like, hey, do you remember George? And I was like, Yeah, of course I remember George. Why? What's up? And he's like, you know, he was a fucking werewolf, right? And I was like, okay, so now I have some validation. Maybe I did not dream this. Maybe this guy did not conjure this up in my brain. And we had a lengthy conversation about it. And he saw the same thing I did, roughly around the same age I was. But he was never primed. I don't know that he was meant to see it. Right. Did he see it in the bathroom as well? Like, was it the same type of situation? It was a totally different situation. It was, and there was a room upstairs. This house was two stories that was always locked. Like, it was a mystery room. We could never go in there. It was always locked. This house had a skeleton key. That's how old this house was. Okay, each room had like freaking ivory door handles. I mean, just really cool old creepy ass house so we were visiting one day and this is this is per my brother i was not here for this i was probably there but i did not witness but he told i was like yes i know he's a werewolf how did you know and he's like okay so we were over there one day and you know that room that was always locked that we could never get into like yeah and he was like so i went up to the top of the stairs and that door was open and George was standing there, but he was a wolf. And I was like, you've got to fucking be kidding me. Like, you, you saw it. I'm not, I did not make this up in my, you know, imagination as a child. Like, the, you you too. And he's like, no, absolutely. And he described exactly, to a T, what I described to you guys. And said he looked at him, but, and, and my brother, and my brother's kind of a bitch baby. And he, he said, he was like, no, I was scared and I ran away. But he was in the room that we were never allowed to go in that was always locked and there were mattresses like lined up from wall to wall and george was just standing there jeans brown belt no shoes black fur yellow eyes same claws the whole night so i got some validity there and my parents still think like 
I'm definitely crazy, but my brother and I definitely saw something. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't know if George is the type to fucking buy some type of costume that's good enough to trick people into thinking it's real and putting that on and hiding in the fucking bathroom and waiting till you go in there to scare you with it, but I mean, to me this after listening to Vic Cundiff stuff for many years, it sounds like uh, I mean, George was a werewolf. See, and that's what I think too. I and my brother as well. We both are 100 percent like sure of it later in life um before my brother and i talked about this okay so in between my great-grandmother passed away and when she died george disappeared we never saw him again really ever he was just gone wow really yeah and to this day, I mean, like now, I, I mean, we have the technology. I would love to, I'm sure he's passed at this point, but I don't even know his last name. Your mom doesn't know what happened to him? No, no one. He just left because I asked my mom because she's always, she's very incredulous. She's like, hmm, I know you think George is a werewolf. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know he is, first of all. But <laughs> um, she was telling me that he actually was in the CIA as a younger man in like the 60s and he was like in Cuba and did shit over there. There's so many holes in the story, man. It's There's so many holes that I just wish I could get this information to fill in, but I don't even know his last name. That gives me a question for you, Mike, uh, with uh, working with the CIA and not being a dog man, we're talking werewolf, like, you know, the classic... Uh black and white werewolf type thing and uh, with the stuff in the jars do you think are you thinking like like it's a fucking lichen or is this some type of magic i mean usually the the stuff in the jars gets tied to magic in some way um i know there's a lot of different reasons why you would put things in jars and if you remember when we back way back when when we talked about the the zozo demon uh, when they first found that, it was buried in the backyard and surrounded by jars filled with, I believe, dead crows and dead bats. So I wonder if it's like a protection type thing. Or may oh. maybe he wasn't a werewolf. Maybe he was, I mean, like practicing magic, shape-shifting magic. Maybe. Potentially. Maybe that's like a skinwalker type thing. Yeah. It also should be noted, I forgot... This is actually very important. George was of Native American descent. Okay. Hmm. So that's kind of important because I know there are a lot of Native American. Was was he was he Navajo? Do you know? I have no idea. See, that's the thing, man. I gosh, I wish there was there was just there's just so many things I don't know, and like I have the technology to like find these things out now, but I don't have anything to go on. His name was George. That's all I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, you know, so. You just got to Google George the werewolf and then you'll find him. <laughs> <laughs> Late when, when my brother and I actually, when my whole family, after my great grandmother passed away and George disappeared, we did live in that house for a couple of years. And my brother and I saw lots of shadow people. He's actually convinced that George was just living under the house as a wolf and would just, like, come in from time to time. Huh. He is who he is. But I saw lots of shadow people and things of that nature in that house as well. So I don't know. I don't know. It could, could be a hot spot. Yeah, or stuff he's conjured or brought with him, you know. Right, right. That could, that could so be a lot of things. Yeah, that's why I wanted to tell you guys the story because, like, maybe you guys can give me some insight as to what, you know, because it didn't it didn't seem like werewolf vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the the fact the fact that you weren't mauled leads me to believe that there was some intelligence remaining behind it. Like, um, maybe it was, but but you gotta wonder what was the point in triggering that shift. If there's little kids there, like that, that, that's the weird part to me. Why, why do that? Well, maybe he doesn't have a choice. I mean, maybe that's what I was kind of getting at earlier with 
uh, it was familiar to you, maybe that's why she didn't get ripped to pieces is because it was fucking great grandpa George. And he was just in that form and was able to be like, no, that's, that's not what I want to do. But it also seems weird. Like if, if he was able to maintain that, why would he start out by telling you that there's a wolf in the house and then make these recordings and like, like kind of like build it up, you know, that, that, that seems kind of weird too. You know what that makes me think of, because I thought of that as well is because, you know, you and your brother, Miss Nikki saw, saw this, it, it, with the jar stuff and the possibility of, of magic on Cause to me, that's it being a bat specifically, that means something that's not coincidence. It wasn't a squirrel or a fucking a mouse. It was a bat. It, to me, it almost sounds like he was picking one of you for something. Well, my brother actually said that Mateo. Oh my gosh. He was like, you know, maybe he was choosing us to, like transform or do something and neither of us pass the test Mm -hmm. because I have two younger sisters as well. So there's myself, my younger brother, I'm two younger sisters and both my parents, all of these people knew George. No one knew anything about that part besides myself and my brother. And also my brother was not set up with the recordings and the dead bats and et cetera. He just, I, I really think my brother just happened upon it. Hmm. And just happened to see him. Like maybe he <laughs> really wasn't supposed to be there that day. I don't know. But also, nobody got mauled. Nobody felt like. I mean, yeah, it was like scary, but it wasn't threatening scary. So there's just so there's just so much I still don't know and don't know if I'll ever be able to put the pieces of that puzzle into place. So. No, that's that's my story. <laughs> that's a fascinating story, uh, Miss Nikki. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. That is absolutely amazing. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me on. I I was like so scared all week long, and then once I got on here, I'm just like I'm just talking to a couple of buddies. Like this is yeah, it's just like a typical, it's a, it's like a typical meetup, except you know we're recording it now. Yeah, we get a lot of comments about how people feel like they're eavesdropping on a conversation and it's easy to listen to that way. And we do that yeah. by just fucking ignoring that that we're recording. We just talk and hang out. Yeah, no, I love it. You guys are my favorite. You guys are the only podcast that exists, in my opinion. So, <laughs> Thank you, Miss Nikki. All right. You guys have an amazing night. We will. Thank you, Miss Nikki. Awesome. Take care. You too. Right, bye. So there we have that. I mean, I mean, to me, it just sounds like an honest to goodness case of uh, somebody who's a fucking werewolf. No if, answer, buts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if this story is is true, and I and I say that because it's me, and not because I'm doubting what what Nikki was saying, but if this story is true, this is the craziest fucking story like ever. You know, you literally saw your fucking grandfather turn into a goddamn werewolf. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck, man. <laughs> I'm still disappointed by the lack of Letterman's jacket, though. Maybe he had one hanging up in his closet. We'll just think of it that way. I Let's. Oh, my God. And if it was her grandfather, like, maybe it was like some awesome 50s greaser one. Yeah, it would have been super old school and cool. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. I hope that was the case. In my head, it's going to be. I don't care about the truth at this point. Being awesome is way more important. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I just dropped my foot on my foot. <laughs> ah, well, that's going to do it here for us, guys. Thank you for listening to us for 10 fucking years, even if you only found Ten us. 10 fucking years. But uh, just let you know. Making us feel uh, appreciated and and enough to keep doing this for ten years, like Mike said, we do this because of you guys. This this we feel a, an obligation to keep doing this for you guys, and we're happy to. And uh, we're we're not at steam yet, although we do have a retirement plan now, dude. Like, imagine how easy doing a live call and show would be. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to get enough live listeners to accommodate such a thing and and a way to take phone calls which is the that's the hard part yeah we'll figure it out yeah we need we need to hire an engineer let's hire an engineer and then we'll get it 
We'll get it going. <laughs> let's let's also buy a studio space. Yeah. And uh, develop teleportation so we can utilize it in person. On a whim. At ease. Yeah, yeah. So basically what that means is we need each and every one of you to join Patreon. And then we need you to buy a gun and go into the streets and hold people hostage (laughs) until they also join Patreon. (laughs) And then you know, have them do the same thing until eventually most of the people in the world will be patrons of the Whatcast where we will be able to collect massive amounts of dollars and build a studio and teleportation and do all of the things we just said we would do. So we don't normally condone violence, but in this case, <laughs> so long as you're not actually murdering people, you can, you can like, you know, shoot to maim or whatever just don't kill people but but make them think you're going to (laughs) you need to you need to put the fear of god you need to put the fear of god into them mateo all right they're not if you say i'm gonna shoot your toe they're gonna be like fuck all the way off and then keep fucking off after that but if you say i'm gonna shoot you in your fucking eye hole (laughs) they're gonna be like shit man I, i use my eyes and also my brain is back there so please don't do that i'll do whatever you want and then you know you do you, you they they do it and they give us their dollars yeah. um but i i want to be clear i don't want you robbing the people like don't don't stick them up and take their wallets or anything just tell them to download patreon on their phone and you know while you're holding the gun to their eye hole and then make sure they they donate the dollars to us and then once they do that just send them on their way maybe 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 give them one of those uh you know the the wink gun things that one of those guys <laughs> well before we go we wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been a patron supporter past or present doesn't matter if you're one now it's the fact that you were so inclined to help us through patreon that we wanted to say thank you miss jennifer flutie miss kim pratt robert vidson baus and duros miss Kristen jennings Miss Gail the Snail. Gail the Snail. I wonder if she mashes it. <laughs> Miss Vicky Wynn. Ooh, the Mighty Goat. Stephanie Wilson. Miss Catherine Jones. The lovely Miss Deb. Justin Snyder. Justin Snyder. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I, so, Justin Snyder, if if you are in fact the Justin Snyder that I went to high school with, please let me know. If 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 it's just some fun coincidence then it's a fun coincidence. Ooh. But if it is Justin Snyder that I went to high school that I haven't talked to you in like fucking 20 years, I hope you're doing well. Uh, oh, yeah. I Leave it to me. The first name I read and I got fucking... Bo- what a waste of time I am. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sophie Swan and Emery Mad Plume Jr. It's like the best name in history. Yeah. Are we sure that we don't have fucking supervillains as our patrons what kind of thing are we and then we've got the jt experiment what what is the jt experiment john roberts tell me i need to know and it, are, is it gonna is it some sort of innator and is the tri-state area in da- any danger i don't know uh, thank thank you carlos flores thank you jennifer place who uh wrote a f- fantastic book called building 51 and we had her on the show to talk about it and if you didn't listen to it, go back and listen to it now and buy your book because it's fucking fantastic. Um, I don't want to thank this bastard, but Warsmith, Chris, Aries, Mars, thank you for, <laughs> for being an active patron and, and making me do ridiculous things. And thank you also for being Murgatronk's Bimsy. You did a fantastic job and I love you forever. Yes, sir. Till... The Mighty Till. Love that guy. Love you, Till. I love you, Till. <laughs> he's he's very active in the in the Discord and uh we 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 see him regularly. Uh also thank you to Jessica S and and also thank you to Teresa Pop. I appreciate the shit out of that. Amelia Edward Simpson, Robert Freeland, Robert Colley, Mr. Isaac Batman, Bateman. Is he I- any related to the Batman? 
I hope or is so. Or it just a coincidence? Maybe it's just a family name. I don't want to presume. Michael Wagner? Is that is that Swaggin? Yes, sir. Nick Ray? Miss Audra Stinson? Audra Stinson is a goddamn all-star. If oh, Audra yeah. Stinson literally bought... I, I believe... I don't know about you, actually, but she she bought me my first fucking mixer and mic. Yep. Absolutely. So, hell yeah, Audra Stinson. The best. And then we've got a Cthulhu Doom cultist, so my people. Miss Sarah Fuentes. Mr. James Montemuro. Mr. Nathan Corsart. He's in the Discord all the time. The lovely Miss Angelique Roy. Thank you, Miss Angelique. She has supported us for such a long time. Thank you. Thank you for being a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Mr. Joe Albricio. Then we've got Nikki and Eldon, who uh, Nikki is is the Nikki that we just heard from. Lindsay Bauer, Joel Runyon, Master Andrew French. I don't know what he's the master of, but I hope it's making soup or cookies. <laughs> and his Mrs. Alexandria. Love, love you guys. Valentine Baker Pasha, Sophie Buresh, Sharina Weatherholt. All awesome people. Thank you for your support over the years. Um, and we have uh, Sika Calling, who's, I don't know what your name is, but thank you for, you know, being awesome. Cousin Shane. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Cousin Shane. I appreciate all the support. And you were also a former guest on the show uh talking about the voice in the fan so yeah scary episode yeah so shane i i know i see you regularly i know you're doing well but thank you for listening to the show and also for putting a whatcast sticker on your car super super awesome nice i spotted it the other day i was like is that a whatcast sticker and in fact it was so that was that was cool eric jensen exist brightly don't mind if I do. Christine Stuck. Hector with no last name. Mysterious character, that Hector. Shane McGovern. <laughs> Ramona Edwards Simpson. Alexander Hooten. Arlene Ogston. Kenneth John Odell. Sam Dolbob. <laughs> I hope that's really the real name. Sam Dolbob. I doubt it is, but I hope it is. <laughs> Miss Eddie Ober, Miss Adelaide Oberholzer, uh, Mr. Michael Bennett from the Text Files. Love you, buddy. Brent Garrett, Daniel, Miss Stephanos Dot, Mr. Marco Lopez, Katie Reese. I don't know. I always thought it was Rez. Fantastic artist. Love love his shit. He he sent me a, a care package uh, last year and. I, I don't know how to get in touch with him because I think he's uh, through Instagram. Instagram. I think he connected yeah. with us. But I, I don't use Instagram. But yeah, so awesome. Thank you for that. I I wear, wear my Bigfoot shirt regularly and I've got the stickers you sent me uh, posted on my wall of stickers so that it's, it's it's there with all the, all the good shit. And yeah, uh, that's just fucking really cool of you to send that shit out, and I appreciate it. And thank you for also being a patron. Like, just just double cool, you know? Liam Neville, Rocky, the Time Intruder, which is that's probably the coolest name ever. Yeah, who let that guy here? He's, it sounds <laughs> like he's uh, trying to take the, the throne of our Lord and Savior. Listen, buddy, there's only one evil Time Lord that's allowed in the Whatcast. So... I hope you're preparing for future warfare. <laughs> Robert Crow, Ben Hunt, Travis Grieve, Miss Lisa, Miss Kelsey. Another fantastic artist. Yep, fantastic artist. She sent us a care package as well of some amazing artwork. Vincent Hayes, Justin Watts, good old fucking Sam. Love you, buddy. Uncle Nobby. Sounds sounds like uh, one of one of those uncles. No offense, <laughs> Nobby, but come on, come on, you're creeping me out, guy. You're creeping me out, but I appreciate the shit out of you anyway. Brett, Piggot, Kimberly, Kate, and Celesta, all awesome people. Ashura, Adil Zapata, John Emmett, and uh, 
fucking Delago, of course. Absolutely, we have to thank Delago. Delago's uh, more of a help than we deserve. De- Delago's the oil that keeps the engine running. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And he gets he gets my motor running anyway. I don't know about you, Mateo. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, so much for listening to us. Uh, here's to another ten years, and we will see you all next week. We might take a, a week off after this one. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that went in here, but uh, yeah. So if we're not here next week, it's because uh, you know we don't, we didn't, we 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 put too much work in here, and we were tired. And I mean, honestly, this episode is probably over two hours at this point. So I don't know. Maybe I know this is the end of the episode and it's too late, but maybe go back in time and only listen to <laughs> half this week and then listen to half next week. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram. So these assholes do a two hour, 10 year anniversary episode and don't mention me once? Well, I could be just as petty. Please enjoy a song of every one of their mess-ups from one episode. That's right. All from one episode. Not one um, or zombie noise repeated. Enjoy, and Mike and Mateo can sniff it. 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 Um, uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> I mean, um, I, and I, I, and, uh, I, like, just, um, uh, um, um, I mean, and, and, uh, we've, and, 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 there's, there's, it's, it's, um, sh- um, uh, this, 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 uh, um, um, with, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 and I, I, um, uh, I, like, just, um, uh, um, um, uh, and, uh, and, 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 there's, there's, it's, it's, um, 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 uh, on here.